Whitney. I've never been paranoid. Fear plays a large part in family life. I feel like something's gonna happen. And if I scratch the surface, there'll be something terrible underneath. He's afraid his sister. Could you zip me up, Billy? Is not what she seems. God, Bill, what's the matter with you? He thinks his friends are out to get him. Make waves with me, you're gonna drown. People are what they are. Now you have to learn to accept that. He's about to find out the truth. <laughs> so why, why are you guys doing this to me, huh? What, you've been living with these people all your life and you didn't know anything about this? Is far worse than he could ever imagine. If you don't follow the rules, Billy, bad things happen. Didn't you know, Billy boy? The rich of old sucked off low class scum like you. Uh oh, guy. Clarissa? Don't be so intense. Now, some people make the rules and some people follow the rules. It's a question of what you're born to. You never were one of us. You know, you really deserve what's going to happen to you. I, I don't think so. Wait. Can't you see they're setting you up for something? You know how I hate to give you drugs. You're officially dead. Don't go home, Billy. No, 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 no! Bill Whitney is about to become one... Showtime, Billy! ...with society. <laughs> Who are you? Let me give you a hand, Bill. <laughs> In Beverly Hills, what you fear is only the beginning. Anything for society. <laughs> There's a big party I want to invite you guys to over at uh, um, <laughs> what Ted the Tycoon Ferguson's yeah. house. Yeah. Now yeah. Expect a telegram uh, any minute. <laughs> okay, so this movie is a 1989 movie that actually didn't come out in this in the states until 1992 because oh, wow. it was considered sort of taboo and and you know I, if you've seen it you kind of might understand why it is hard to imagine like the MPAA rating this film in a strange way mm-hmm. like it's hard to imagine someone approaching this movie in any way yeah, uh, yeah. but um yeah a society uh, directed by and I hope I'm pronouncing his name right Brian Yuzna who um is also uh a producer on uh, reanimator and i think one of the ways he got this movie budgeted was he owned the sequel rights to reanimator and he agreed to do that if they would fund this movie i hope i'm okay. not mangling that story but i mean this is an oddball film this is an outlier even for its time i heard an interesting interview with the director uh where he said that he thinks that now audiences are reclaiming this movie because they watch it and they think it's just the 80s like they just go everything that looks is cheap and schlocky about it people are yeah. forgiving of it because it's just like oh the 80s and even i yeah. found myself in the first 15 or 20 minutes being nostalgic like just the haircuts and the outfits and the fact that it's shot on film and the lighting yeah. it just felt like oh this is a nostalgia blast and then of course it is what it is but he said that he thinks that audiences in 1989 and 92 saw it as schlocky and weird and now people are seeing it as like a product of its time more which i think there is some truth to that that modern i know that my son will sometimes watch an old movie he doesn't have the context for whether it was corny at the time or whether it just looks corny because it's old yeah, but right. um this movie is hard to imagine and then the other thing the director said and i guess i'll throw this to you at this point um he also said he doesn't think and this is an odd choice of words he said this is not a seminal film um i thought that was slightly ironic but what he meant was uh, it was a standalone movie that it didn't influence a lot of movies that came after it it does have like cult status yeah. but it's more like cult status you hear about it you hear about how effed up it is and then you feel like you need to watch it i mean if you're a film fan or a horror fan i'm right. this was looming out there for me to check out so this is the first time i'd watched it um i definitely have some reactions but i'd love to know just off the cuff ronald maybe we'll start with you what did how did you feel maybe talk about the range of feelings you went through while watching uh 1989 or 1992's society. okay so i've heard people talk about things that they imagine wealthy people do in barber shops and bars like it's like a conversation i used to hear as a kid and one that I used to hear in barbershops. It's like the 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 like all encompassing, this is what rich people do. This is the Illuminati. 
And, and I wonder to to the point where I wonder <laughs> if it's based these thoughts are based on this movie. Like if like one person saw it, it's like, man, you know what? They just fuck each other and then people come out of assholes and they start eating each other. It's like <laughs> it, it's it's that that's the whole of, review of the movie right there. That's yes. all you it's that kind mm. of you don't weird. hear stories like that in supercuts, Ronald. <laughs> no, no, no. But uh I can take you to a couple barbershops where they'll tell you what ri- that rich people do these sorts of things. And and that's that's why it didn't seem so odd to me. Yeah. Like watching it and being like, Oh, I've heard someone say this before. Right. This is what people do, rich people do. Uh but Practical effects, man. I, 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 whatever this movie is, whatever style of acting this is, it's like heightened. Even for its time, wasn't normal. No, it's, it's like, very much like it. That's something that I would want to say to anybody watching it now. Like, even if you watched it at the time, you would have caught it. But especially now, they are doing something. I don't know if all the actors are in control of that, but the yeah. ones who are, they're definitely doing a more heightened kind of satirical tone. I think Bill, Billy Warlock is an interesting case of like what is his acting style beyond this? I mean, he comes off Baywatch onto this. So it's like, we're not expecting like him to be a great thespian, but he does fulfill the role of what, what Bill Whitney uh, Whitley needs to be in this movie. Um, I heard someone say that it's one of those rare cases where the actor's name is more of a movie name than the character's name. He should just be Billy (laughs) Warlock in every movie that he does. It was odd, man. It was an odd movie, but I'm really glad that I watched it, to be completely honest with you. Like, I'd always seen that. Co- I remember that cover after I told yeah. you that I kind of mm. hadn't seen it before. I I remember walking into uh, a video store and seeing it, seeing that picture. Like, it's very distinct, you know, the... the but the practical effects were incredible, man. Like, I, I loved that they exist. Everything looked wet and disgusting and bloody and yeah would you yeah, think the effects the effects are by screaming mad george we should just mention who had a oh. pretty interesting career um and did like uh famously uh i'm trying to think of what other things you might know the cockroach scene in nightmare on elm street 4 was the work of screaming oh wow mad george um but lots of films from that era had effects either entirely by them or uh you know like a sequence and often it would be this kind of thing gross slimy uh yeah. body horror type stuff <laughs> wow steve what'd you think you know, honestly, like I, I mentioned last time, I, I you, you're you right. I, I think I did the same thing in terms of the, the box art for this was always one that I remember seeing when I worked at like a, I had a couple different video store jobs, like, you know, local store and like Hollywood video. And it was always one of those ones like, you know, that kind of benefited from an interesting box art. You know, people would grab it for that reason. And a couple of friends had recommended it to me. And I remember watching it like in the late 90s. I remember watching it um, when I was in high school. And I didn't really remember much of it until I, you know, rewatching it, it kind of, a lot of it came back. And honestly, you, you, it's funny you mentioned the Billy Warlock of it all, because like, I remember like he he like stood out to me for some reason, uh, <laughs> like I think from Baywatch, like having yeah. watched Baywatch and and this movie and then another movie that um, uh, I remember watching a ton uh, when I was younger. But yeah, I, I didn't remember a ton of the movie itself. Um, a couple key scenes kind of stood out in my memory. You remember yeah, the shunting, probably. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I, I don't know. Like, it's just it's it's weird though, because I I feel like I felt the same way then. Like, this is another one of those kinds of horror movies that is just maybe not my thing. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the things that stand out really like are the practical effects and kind of just like how just off the rails the movie goes. Yeah. But one thing I I remember thinking, you know, when I was rewatching it a couple like a week or so ago, which a couple weeks ago, was like. It's one of those examples that like as how to say this, like as crazy as the movie gets and is like the main character, like the way he's reacting to it all is like the way you would react to it all. You know, like I feel like in some horror movies or, you know, thrillers, whatever it is, like the reactions to the things that you're presented with, like a lot of things would be dismissed or like excused or they would write something off. You know, like there's a lot of like convincing yourself that you're not seeing what you're seeing. Or yeah. you're, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I feel like that is one thing I do like a lot about the movie is that like for all the craziness and just absurdity that happens in this kind of body horror uh, movie, his character like is calling it as it is like the whole movie. 
Yeah. You know, or even when he's faced with like people telling him that he's not seeing what he's seeing or that, that there's nothing there, like everything that he questions is like a valid thing to question. <laughs> and yeah. he's not like convincing himself that it's not what he's looking at or, you know, you know what I mean? Like, I, I know, know exactly what you mean. I think yeah. about that in horror stories a lot and how I think that it's like being on the road. Anybody going faster than you is a maniac and anybody going slower than you is an idiot. And in, in a right. movie, Anybody who's acting more gullible than you is an idiot. And and anybody who's less gullible <laughs> than you is a maniac. But I think that there is this weird thing that's like, um, I mean, his his acting style, I was trying to place it, like what it was making me of. And it was definitely kind of of its time. And I realized yeah, yeah. he's got like, it's like a John Stamos look, but with like big Emilio Estevez energy, you know, <laughs> and maybe even a little bit of like Michael J. Fox voice. Like he's doing a little bit of this kind of he's got, voice. That's that's it. He's got that Michael J. Fox kind of like inflection when he's talking. But he's like a little guy. Like and yeah, he looks yeah. very small next to people. And I had heard yeah. somewhere that he's David like, Hasselhoff. He's got that like, yeah. 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 Come on, guy. We got to yeah, like, go. Come on, man. Yeah. 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 Let's go. But it's like, that's Billy Warlock's character. And you're right. He does sort of ground the movie in this very strange way, even though there are times where he's like walking along and he's actually kind of walk, walking yeah. like this. Like he's sort of a doof in some ways. And it's right. It's really not clear to me how much he knew. And I think he's said as much that he he didn't know at the time what kind of movie they were making, but that he now kind of appreciates it. But I think what you're saying, Steve, actually makes some of the more unsettling parts of the movie play. Like when they yeah. get him at towards the end and they've got they've snared his neck. I mean, we should just say it's basically the simple log line would be that this young man who's adopted um, views his adopted family kind of from a distance and doesn't feel like he's quite one of them. And then it becomes more and more the case when he discovers they're all part of this secret society that seems to be like basically rich people that are all aliens or ancient beings or something. Not, not, not aliens, but ancient beings who have a lineage that goes back through, who was it? Julius Caesar all the way to Genghis Khan or something yeah. like that. Like, I don't know yeah. if that makes sense or, or adds up. Um, but the idea that they hunt uh, poor people, uh, or just less advantaged people than themselves to um, uh, basically fist to death and then like pound massage into mush uh, and then like suck their life force up. And that's what they do. And they call it the shunting. <laughs> and Billy doesn't know until the end of the movie that this is like the fate they have lined up for him. We see it happen to poor Dave Blanchard. Um, Blanchard bursts into the house. I know. And he's yelling at them. And that's the thing. B Billy kind of roughs him up. Yeah. And then sends him packing. And his parents are very like, didn't we tell you not to date Blanchard? Yeah, you're talking about like, the beginning where, where Dave Blanchard is like hiding in the closet, actually, and like watching his sister sh like get dressed. And it seems very yeah. creepy and, and still is pretty creepy. He but what he's trying house, to do is get proof that these are weird beings. Yeah. I mean, it, he roughs him up like it, it's yeah. in front of the parents and they are the calmest I've ever seen parents that A, a person is in their house, B, that their son be kind of shook up this man that's maybe a foot taller than him yeah <laughs> and, then, and then he's trying to convince him why didn't you spit out what was wrong with him because he's like hey, hey i gotta tell you something i gotta tell you he's like shut up well, i don't think up. he could say it in front of them he's got to prove it to he's got to prove it to billy but he uses that tape to prove it but i just wanted to uh finish saying that that moment where billy gets dragged into the party and he's getting thrown on the floor and stuff like that's pretty unsettling and the way they're all standing around and they're being so casual it's just yeah. very creepy like and and I do think that that Billy Warlock somehow plays those scenes reasonably well. Like it's it's like that whole thing of he actually doesn't mind being at a loss. Yeah. But um, but yeah, earlier in the movie, it's interesting how Dave. Do you remember how he does get him to believe him as he takes him out to the beach <laughs> yes. and he plays him that that micro cassette recorder? I actually recorded a bit of dialogue that I thought was funny, and I just I just wanted to say okay. this is this is the kind of I hope it'll play. If not, we can drop this audio in. Um, do I have that? Is it like this? Okay, yes. So I hope this will be audible. Wow, your boobs are totally sexy. You guys are gonna pop high ones. Wow, your boobs are totally sexy. Guys are gonna pop high ones as soon as they yes! see you. <laughs> I that was such that weird one. dialogue, but what it reminded me of when I was like in 12th grade, not 12th grade, when I was 12 years old, I had a friend, this was in three way, it was kind of a new thing. I had a friend who would call me up and he would kind of not bully me, but he would kind of cajole me into calling like sex lines. And we would listen to these sex lines. And I at 12 had no 
I, it was just weird, but the, but that's what the women sounded like. They were like, Oh, he's got a hot rod. Oh, I'm, let me put my fingers around it. Mm, get those pants off, buddy. And it was just these weird things that no one really says. But when I heard that scene, it was like, man, this is because it kind of sounds like people that don't know. You're what, having like, flashbacks. I was having flashbacks <laughs> to getting in trouble for that phone bill. You yeah, know, I bet. Um, when I was, when they I was 12, but, but, but like not knowing why it was like not getting like not being old enough to even understand why it was right. supposed to be good or arousing it was just weird to listen to that stuff but i felt like that the that was the way those that scene sounded to me but yeah it was pretty interesting i i the, you know the sexuality in this movie is extremely graphic and very like there's a lot of incest and there's just I mean, yeah. once you get into like the physical transformations later, it's one of the more graphic films I've seen in terms of that stuff. I think it's only kept from being like truly horrific by the fact that, uh, as you were saying, Ronald, like the the practical effects, the prosthetics are very stylized and yeah. almost like Beetlejuice esque uh, as far as like stretching faces and that kind of thing. It's a little cartoony, and that keeps it from being. In fact, at one point, it's very cartoony. A guy actually goes blah 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but but it does pay off i think that's the thing if this is a movie that you're watching because you heard it was screwed up and there's a crazy last act it, it like uh, nikki was Hold walking on. in and out being like what is this 90210 shit that john is watching and she kept saying stuff like you're making ronald and steve watch this <laughs> <laughs> such a crazy movie but then when she luckily was in the room when things went crazy and she sat there transfixed for the next 25 minutes and will never be the same i don't think um yeah it, and that's where nikki changed yeah right <laughs> what about when when Milo is it Milo when Milo is his friend yeah yeah he Milo. comes he the is he the nerdy guy who's the nerdy guy nerdy guy is Petri who okay, is like when Petri <laughs> supposedly dies yeah and then he comes to the event and they're like he's like I thought you died everybody's laughing at him and he goes like this <laughs> like <laughs> like his throat wasn't slit but he's referencing his neck like like he like he pieced it together or something. It's just a very weird scene. It just I I I couldn't get over that sort of thing, that sort of stuff. It was like the little I'm like, why are they acting like this about this thing? I the the over the top stuff makes sense to me because they're like, we're going for crazy. But it was a subtle shit like that. That was like, why is everybody reacting like well, this? Well, I liked that even Milo was like, I really thought we were just playing a joke. I mean, even though what Milo's doing to him, apparently he's been the one hiding that Ken doll in the car and all that shit. And yeah. Then the, the, but like Maybe when he's like, I didn't know you would react like this. I thought that was kind of funny. It's like you weren't supposed to get up in front of the school and have like a crazy <laughs> rant. You were just supposed to. But it's still like, what did you think he was going to do? I thought yeah. I liked the earlier debate between him and Petrie where – um. It was basically like Petrie was it was the Hillary Clinton effect where Petrie insulted the crowd. Uh, and and then uh, and then Billy basically turns to him in a very Trumpy way. He says, like, looks like you just just lost the moron vote, you know, and I yes. thought that was a very, very prescient moment. But what what did what did he say? He said something like um, he accused Billy uh, of using his athletic ability to appeal to the morons in the audience or something like yes. that. And then it was like, you could tell the crowd turned against him. And that's when I noticed, and this is another funny thing. Did you notice that whenever they showed shots of characters in the crowd, it was like a differently framed type of shot of like the front two rows of the auditorium or mm. an auditorium. But whenever they sh cut to a wide shot, it was like they just went to a school auditorium that was full of kids and got like some like B roll because yeah. the kids are just kind of reacting, but they don't seem to, like they're not necessarily reacting to what we're seeing. I thought that was kind of funny, but I think in a low budget movie, you probably do what you can. Yeah, um, you just get some patch over those holes. Do do some do some takes where you're yelling, do some takes where you're laughing, and it just kind of yeah. Like, you're happy, yeah. you're sad, you like yeah. it, you don't. You're right. It did seem kind of weird because they they were framed so differently. It 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 just didn't even yeah. That damn. But uh, yeah. What a weird movie. I'm glad I watched it though. I mean, like it's not my it's not my cup of tea, but I'm glad I had it some exposure to society, which they repeated constantly yes. in the movie. It, to the point where I was trying to get what they were getting at. Like I was like, it's is right. this supposed to be fake deep? Like I, I can't figure out if it's like felt a little happy handed. I, I liked some of that though, not necessarily the repetition of the word society, but I liked some of the these people are weird and they just say weird things. Like the 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 girlfriend Clarissa said weird things to him. Like at one point she said, You're so fresh, which <laughs> felt weird. And then she also said something to him 
about like, well, she, one thing she said that was weird is when they were getting undressed, she said, uh, lean machine jelly bean, which yes. is a very strange thing to say to anybody. Strange. Was that, um, was that supposed to be an indication that she wasn't normal? May, maybe. I mean, we know that she's got the twisty, she's got, she can put her butt in the front or whatever. <laughs> so yeah. it's like, we know, we know that she's one of them, but she's like in love. Front she can, butt. Yeah. She's an old front butt. Front but butt. She's, <laughs> but she's in love Good with old um, front butt. <laughs> But she's in love with Billy, right? So in the end, she's kind of like redeemed by that. And she doesn't really seem like she's into all the shunting when it's going on. Right, right, right. Um, right. But it, it it isn't quite clear. Like in her mom, I thought her mom was just her own weird oddball person who ate hair and coughed up hairballs. But apparently that's something that the shunters do too. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, there's unanswered questions for sure. <laughs> because it was like, they, they he was going to have sex with her. And then his, her mother comes in like, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> Did you notice every time the mother was there, the the the, the score went like boom, 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 boom. There was like a little music cue that came up. Oh, one other odd little thing. I don't mean to just. I mean, you can look at a movie like this, and like you don't want to necessarily pick on all the signs that it was a low budget movie. But there was one really weird edit when Billy's about to leave the party. He's like, she's like, run, Billy, and he runs for the door, and then they grab him and throw him back down, and then the next shot is like a dark stairwell, and he's running up the stairwell. He's somehow, it's, I think that just means they didn't get a scene they needed, or they had to patch something together. Mm. But there's this really weird edit where it seems like they have him in a well lit room, and there's like twenty of them, and then somehow he's he's in a dark hallway all by himself. But uh, oh, um, you know, you got to give a movie credit for just throwing an edit like that in there, and not <laughs> not doing anything to explain it. Oh boy. I will wow. say this. I, I did read the credits because I wanted to see that the song is like the Eaton, I think it's Eaton, the fight song for, for Eaton, uh, the school that they rewrote those words to that are about society. And if you look at the lyrics to the song that they're singing in the opening and the closing, they're like, it sounds like a college fight song, but it's got these weird lyrics that apply to the, the ancient society of, of oh, the film. Wow. And the other thing I noticed in the credits are the two best names of all time. Uh, in the special thanks, Flip Blimstein and Blanche Blimstein. <laughs> Good old flipping Blanche <laughs> down the street in the club. And in, in, in summation, I, the director Brian Yustin has this great quote that I listened to. I listened to the you know the projection booth that podcast. Yeah, that they had an episode about this, and I listened to some of that. And the director said, and I just love this. He said when he was making it, he was trying to make such a good movie, and he thought it was going to. Um, I'd be number one at the box office. And then he kind of pauses and he says, but then again, I was delusional. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Yikes. That's a crazy. At least but I, mean, I, I, th I think you have to make, though, a movie. I don't know. You have to kind of be up in your own head to make a movie like this. And yeah, I know what you mean, Ron. Well, it's not my cup of tea either from beginning to end, but I am glad I saw it. And I am glad that a movie like this exists because it is so different, even from all the all the oddball movies you might watch from this era. This one kind of stands on its own mm -hmm. and its own weird wobbly jelly Vaseline legs. And I think that's, uh, <laughs> you know, that's special.